The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Felix, I have this great idea for a project. Okay, so I have some friends getting married in the next few months and I thought it would be great to make a portable photo booth. Yeah, okay, so you're talking about going to a wedding so it's like a small kind of thing, portable? It'd be nice if it was portable so I could take it with me and put it in my car easily and if I want to I could set up like a big curtained off area for it, but I think just the electronics in a small portable case would be nice. Yeah, that sounds like think? a really cool project for a wedding. All right, let's do this. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, Mr. Kabil, um, we're gonna power up the Raspberry Pi. I got some instructions here on how to set up the photo booth software. And also another thing that I did is I have the VNC going so that we can interact with the Raspberry Pi from uh, a full-size computer. So are we gonna try to make this so that it dumps the photos to uh, a storage device? Um, or are you trying to primarily get it to upload to a website? With this software, it should be able to store the files locally, but then also upload them to Flickr. We're gonna need Pi Camera, which is a Python program. We're gonna need Graphics Magic, that's for manipulating the images once we take them. And Pi Tumblr, well actually we're not gonna use Pi Tumblr, we're gonna use Pi uh, the Flickr. Flickr API yeah. to allow us to upload them to Flickr? Cool. Yeah. So mostly we need to download the software and install them. You download okay. it, install it, and then we're gonna need, after, after everything's set up, we'll test it and try it out. And then um, we're going to configure the Raspberry Pi so that when it boots up, it just goes straight into the uh, the Pi Flicker, the Flickr Pi or software. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so run these two instructions to see if it will work. You should get these errors. Python space dash c parentheses import Pi camera parentheses. Okay, there's our hey, there's error. our error, and then up arrow, and then three. Alt. You can do Alt arrow. Error. Okay. Okay, so we do sudo apt-get update. There's actually on the Raspberry Pi. There's a file that has uh, links to repositories. There are various repositories that are in okay. that file. So when we update, it reads that file, and then it goes out to those repositories, and it gets the current list of everything, and the current version of everything that's in those repositories. And then it comes back to the local machine, and it updates all the information of what's current. Okay, so it's on archive.raspian.org. Mm -hmm. So I assume that you can edit that file to add whatever repositories you need. Yep. So um, now that that's done, next thing you do would be app get upgrade. So anything um, that is not current, it will update it. Okay. So what does upgrade do upgrade. differently than update? Okay, the difference between upgrade and update. Upgrade looks at what packages are newer on the repository mm -hmm. compared to what's installed. If something is installed and it's an older version, it will then go and get the newer version and install it. So, let me see if I can understand this correctly. Update makes sure that the information, or like the, the list of information matches, and upgrade makes sure that the versions of them are the most current? Mm-hmm. Okay, so even if, if you update and the names are the same, it'll say like, okay, you're good, you've got all the names are the same, but upgrade checks and says like, oh, but this one was updated, you know, a month or, you know, more recent than what you currently have, so it upgrades it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we ran update, and then we ran upgrade, and then we rebooted, and so now we're going to reinstall the Pi Camera software. Let's see if this works. Reading package lists. Two newly installed. Hooray! Yep, so what it does, it goes out to the repository, finds the binaries, it downloads them, and then it goes through the process of installing. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Hooray! Now let's double check, make sure it works. Python space dash C, quotation mark, import Pi Camera, quotation. And then up arrow. And then put the uh, three. Okay. Okay, we're looks good. All right, so, great. That step is you? all done. Now we need graphics magic. Pseudo app get installed graphics magic. It might already be installed. Let's find out. If it's in, if it is already installed, let's say, oh, it's already installed. It. There you go. It's already installed. Hooray. Actually type LS. So now right now I also type PWD. Okay. So right now, this is where you're at on the on the uh, drive. So root, home, pi, right? You can either put your photos here in your Pi directory mm -hmm. or put them on, a de on the desktop. Let's put them in pictures. That seems like a logical place. Well, hold on. We're, this program 
right? Isn't going to install into the binaries directory. This is going to install somewhere else. You could put it in pictures, that would be good. Or you could put it in um, photo booth. This is the software? Yeah, this is the software okay, then, yeah, that makes it Yeah, we should put that in pictures. I think putting that in photo booth is a great place to put yeah. it. Yeah, you could do make directory photo booth instead of pi desktop photos, just make directory photo booth. Okay. MKDIR and then space photo booth. Okay. They can type ls again and you'll see it there. So cd for change directory, space ph, tab. Cool. And then enter, and then you'll be in the photo booth directory. Hooray. You can type ls to list the content, contents of the directory. There's nothing, nothing there. because I just created that. So you w get. You can either type all that or we can just copy and paste, but if you wow. want to type it, that's fine. I'm fine typing. You can ls and there'll be like some zip file there or something. We now have the zip file. Yay. Okay, cool. We see it there. We have, how do we tell it to unzip? Type unzip space. That. Yeah, tab. Ha, I'm getting there. All right, ls, cd space, then I think if you just press tab, enter. So, okay, I wanna make sure I'm understanding this. So we unzip the file so that it's in that directory and then we look to check to see if it was in that directory and then we moved into that, or well, we told it to tell us what directory we're in, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure I'm following all the commands. All right, I'm with you. What's next? What yeah. we're going to need to do, we're going to need to edit the auth.py file, auth.py and config.py. We need to edit those files. And then we can type dot forward slash drumming hands flicker dot pi to make it do something. Okay. So um, go ahead and uh, nano config.py. OK, this is where we're going to need to input your API keys. OK, so file path, we can change where to save the pictures. So you actually said you wanted them in the pictures, right? Home pie pictures is where the pictures will be. So now Ms. Corbeil is entering her super secret API key, which no Don't one should ever, should ever know. You should never release your super secret API keys to anyone, unless that's what you choose to do. OK, so we were able to add my Flickr API information into the, what was that, the config file or the, the auth file? Yeah, it was in the config, config file. file. So in order to install the um, Flickr API, we did sudo pip install Flickr API. So we need that? to run the auth.py file so that it actually pulls my Flickr API. And it may or may not open a browser window and have me authenticate. Hey! Authenticate. Verify. Oh, yeah, it's waiting for so, something. Oh, here we go. Growing. Come in. Authorizing. Hey, there's Ooh, a super key. I need that. I'm going to write that down somewhere. Okay, I, th I think it works. Hey, go to your Flickr account. It's just supposed to, like, upload a test picture. Success! Wow. Dude. If you cool. see this photo on your Flickr stream, then you connected everything right. Go ahead and delete this photo now. So the biggest change I made was what happens once the software starts. Originally, there was a screen that says, push the button when ready, and then it would show you like a, be get creative, make crazy poses. And so between those first two slides, you have to push the button, and it would say, make, you know, make crazy things, and then you push the button again, and then it goes to the camera, and you have to push the button a third time, which there's no prompt to tell you to do that. And then once it does that, it doesn't, there isn't a good indication that anything is happening except the LED blinks a few times on the button and then it takes your picture and it freezes and then it says, you know, hooray, all done, success. Uh, and then it Fireworks. goes back to the beginning. And to me that was too confusing and not intuitive enough. So what I wanted was just an image that tells you push the button and then you get like a second to see where you are and orient yourself. And then there's a countdown of three and then it goes back to the camera. Two goes back to the camera and then one goes back to the camera and then does a white flash and takes your picture. So that's what I added into the code here and it took me a few tries to get it right. When I was originally doing it, uh, I had some of these lines out of order because I was thinking 
what I see and linearly. So I was making the camera stop and then I was having the slide come up. But with the way the code works, it would flash the previous image for a split second um, because it hadn't loaded, it had time to load the image. So what I needed to do was put, um, tell it to look at the slide and then turn the camera off, uh, which would reveal the slide um, and then mm. tell it to sleep for however long I want to sleep. At this point, it's 0.5 seconds, so half a second. And then start the preview again, which shows the camera. So I was able to do that right. and then show my little white flash and then go back. And then after that, it tries to upload to Flickr. And once it uploads to Flickr, it shows you, hooray, you're done, you're finished, hooray. Uh, and then it goes back to the beginning of the start app code and it does it again. And so, and you don't have to do any button presses all, uh, other than the first one where it tells mm -hmm. you to push it and you push it and then it does the thing and it goes back to the beginning. All right, Felix, you want to test this baby out with me? Start camera. Push the button. All right, ready? Hey, In camera. Oh well, man, three, two, one. Oh, yeah! So this gave us a basic functioning photo booth, and I'm really happy with how it is. I was able to test it over the weekend, and it was interesting. It worked fine. Uh, so where I was, there was not really a good solid Wi-Fi network. So at first I had it hooked up with no Wi-Fi and it worked fine and it just, it didn't try to upload and the program ran fine and it just saved the photos to the drive. Well then I was curious, there was a open, a free open Wi-Fi network there. So I tried connecting to it and then I restarted the software and tried to take photos and it froze where it was trying to upload to Flickr. So that was interesting. That, that's a, an interesting bug that I was glad I found out then. Um, but then I was able to just go back and take it offline and it worked fine again. Good to know that if you have a glitchy Wi-Fi network to just turn it off and maybe upload the images later rather than trying to force it to work because it might just break. And then so later, did it upload the images itself or did you have to manually do that? That was the other thing I discovered. So one thing I wasn't sure whether it would do or not is, yeah, if it, if I take the photos when it's offline, when it finds a network again, will it upload them to Flickr automatically? It did not. I had to okay. do it manually. Sure. But that's good to know. I wonder if there's a way. You could probably write more code yeah. that says, mm -hmm. like, if you got this fail, log it, and then see log. If you see a fail, then upload these images yeah, once yeah. you're on a network. We could maybe even do some further error checking in the program mm -hmm. to say, it, it would, like, query the, wi the Wi-Fi just to, before it even tries to upload. Say, yeah. oh, is there a connection? Yeah. And if there is a connection, then try to upload. Yeah, that would be useful. And if there isn't a connection, just don't even try to upload. Just save it for later. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. And then and then on next uh, boot up or whatever, um, button press or something, try and make a connection. Well, cool. Yeah. I'm happy. So. I think this was a really fun project. I'm glad yeah. you got to uh, go to a wedding and try it out. Yeah. So have you ever made a project with the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi camera? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. We'll see you next time. Hey, I really like that one guy. Um, they call him Mr. Rogers. I think he might not be doing much these days, but um, Felix, I have a great idea. I bet for it's a to project. make a photo booth. Oh. <laughs> All right. So uh, I noticed I got some comments in the episode about the uh, the rough nature of my hands here. So I'm just uh, cleaning them up because you know what? Honestly, like I like burn my fingers and stuff. It gets pretty bad. But the truth is, this is uh, this does kind of hurt. So. Thanks for uh, encouraging me to take care of my, uh, my fingers. We've been working on the Logic Gate board game, and this is a pro idea that we're trying to take from concept to product. These have to be pretty cheap. I mean, they have these ingredient cards for crying out loud. This project is probably the least farthest along of the three projects we're working on this year. We were gonna make like the Logic Gate portion of the Hackmanji game. We started with an idea, but we more started with a problem. 